Hi, we're going to talk about deductive reasoning and logical connectives. Proofs play a central role in mathematics and deductive reasoning is the foundation on which proofs are based. Let's look at an example of deductive reasoning. It will either rain or snow today. It is too warm for snow, therefore it will rain. We have arrived at a conclusion from the assumption that some other statement called premises are true. In our statement, the premise is it will either rain or snow today, and it's too warm for snow. We assume that the premise is true, and because of the validity of the premise, we come to the conclusion that it will actually rain. The question then becomes, is the conclusion correct? There's also the possibility that it might be too warm for, for rain. We have no guarantee that the conclusion is true, but it can only be false if at least one of the premises is also false. If both are true, then the conclusion is also true. So an argument is valid if the premises are all true and the conclusion is true as well. Let's look at an invalid argument. Either the butler is guilty or the maid is guilty. Either the maid is guilty or the cook is guilty. Therefore, either the butler is guilty or the cook is guilty. Now, this is an invalid argument. The argument is invalid because even if both premises are true, the conclusion could be false. For example, the maid could have done it. If we look at the very first example, we could represent each statement with a variable. If we think of the latter P as standing for the statement, it will rain tomorrow, and Q as standing for the statement, it will store tomorrow, our argument takes on the form P or Q, not Q, therefore P. Using this form allows us to test an argument validity without even knowing what P and Q stand for. We can also use connective symbols. Connective symbols are symbols used to stand for words that combine statements. A logical connective is a symbol which is used to connect two or more propositional or predicate logics in such a manner that the resulting logic depends only on the input logics and the meaning of the connective used. So here are six connectives. Um, the actual symbol used is in parentheses. For OR, we have the symbol that looks like a V. This is sometimes called the disjunction of P and Q. And, with a symbol like a misshapen A, sometimes called the conjunction of P and Q, we have negation. And that symbol itself, I've seen it in many forms, but here's the form that I see in most books. Uh, this form here. Implication, which means to imply, or if-then statement, we have an arrow. If and only if is an arrow going in both directions. Sometimes you see it as double arrow. Sometimes you see it as a single arrow going in both directions. And we have the triangle of dots, which means therefore. Now we can write our statement PRQ, not Q, therefore P, as basically PRQ, not Q, therefore P. So let's look at some more examples of rewriting an expression using connective symbols. Uh, we have either Sam is not smart and he is hard working or he is smart. Uh, we'll let S be Sam is smart and H be Sam is hard working. Then we can write this as our statement. The parentheses is um, grouping the not smart, the not S, and hard working or S would be that Sam is actually smart. Let's look at another case. Uh, either John has gone to the store or we are out of bread. So if we let J be John has gone to the store and B we have bread, then we use the negation symbol to say that John has gone to the store or we do not have bread. Notice that um, I use the positive form for B. I could have, no, not really. B written as we do not have red would be incorrect because what would be the point of the negation symbol? So we write B in a positive form. We have red, and if we're talking about we don't have red, we write the negation sign there to express that we actually don't have red or to negate the statement.
Let's look at the case where we are rewriting the phrase with connective symbols in plain English. Uh, we have given that P, students have a reading assignment, Q, students have homework problem, and R, students will have a test. So the question is, what is the statement we have P or Q and not Q and R? So the answer is students will have either a reading assignment or homework problem, but the students will not have both homework problems and a test. If you're looking at it, you may have not come with this exact same phrase. Um, in fact, when I first interpreted this, I interpreted this as students will have a reading assignment or homework and not homework problems and a test. But this is a more natural, natural sounding answer, even though the answer that um, I came up with at first wasn't incorrect. You can come up with that, that uh, stiff answer first and just work with it until it sounds a little more natural. Okay, so that's all I have for you guys today. Take care and I will talk to you later.